In this installment, we are going to look at two types of sample problems. The first one of those involves a wooden block that's lying on a wooden table. The fact that they are telling us that it's a wooden block and a wooden table is significant to us. We should take note of it when there are adjectives like that that don't seem to be uh, physics related at first. The mass is 5.1 kilograms. And we want to know the minimum force required to set it in motion and to keep it moving. So that's static friction and dynamic friction. We should begin with a free body diagram. And that free body diagram would consist of the weight, the force of gravity, which is mg, 5.1 kilograms times 10. Gravitational field strength gives us 51 newtons, so the force of gravity is minus 51 newtons. We have the force normal. Since the block is not accelerating vertically, the forces are balanced, and therefore, force normal is equal and opposite to the force of gravity, so it is 51 newtons. We learned previously that when we apply a force and an object is stationary, the force of friction static and the force applied will be equal and opposite to each other. And as we increase the force applied, the force of friction will increase until we reach the maximum possible force of friction, in which case it will break free. So if we want to know the force of friction static, we need the mu static times the force normal. And this is where knowing that it's wood on wood comes into play. When we look at our table of values, wood on wood is 0.5, static is 0.5, and dynamic is 0.3. So 0.5 and 0 0.3. 0 0.5 times 51 is 26.5 newtons. And since the mass is two, two significant digits, we can only report two significant digits. So you see the force of friction static is 27 newtons. Moving to the dynamic part, to keep it moving then, the force of friction dynamic is mu d times force normal. And that mu d is 0 0.3, force normal 51. Multiplied out is 15.3 newtons. Force of friction dynamic Again, only two significant digits, so we have 15 newtons. The uncertainty in both of these values lies in the five, in the ones place. Uh, so this one could be 16 or 14, and the other one, the static could be, the static could be 28 or 26. And so these are the necessary to keep it moving and to start it moving. So that is our first sample problem. The second problem we have is where we have a, a block of ice. Is it an 8.4 kilogram block of ice? And uh, 8.4 newtons to set it in motion. So to set it in motion means that's about static. And 2.52 to keep it going, well, that's dynamic. We want the coefficients of static and dynamic friction. Well, we of course need to start with our free body diagram as we have in the past. Force of gravity is mg. So 8.4 times 10 is 84 newtons. So we have a force of gravity of minus 84 newtons. The block of ice is not accelerating up or down. So therefore the forces are balanced. So force normal is equal and opposite to the force of gravity. So it is a positive 84 newtons. And then we are told that the force applied is 8.4 newtons to set it in motion. At that instant before it breaks free, the force of friction static is minus 8.4 newtons. And so now to find the mu static, the definition of mu static is the ratio of the force of friction static to the force normal. And so the force of friction static is 8.4 newtons the weight is 80, and the, new, the normal is 84 newtons. Newtons cancel, and we are left with 0 0.10 is the mu static. Two significant digits in both, and two significant digits in our mu static. Our mu dynamic, 
Definition is the force of friction dynamic to the force normal. Force of friction dynamic, we are told, is 2.52 newtons. And again, the force normal is 84 newtons. Dividing those out, we get 0 0.030. Again, two significant digits. And this is the mu dynamic and the mu static. So what we see in these two problems is the second one, we are finding the coefficients of friction um, as if we had conducted a lab to do so. In the first case, we are trying to predict the force using already de derived mu values.